Asatoma Sat Gamaya Toma Soma Jotir Gamaya Amrit Yoma Amritam Gamaya Asatoma Sat Gamaya Toma Soma Jyoti Gamaya Mrit Yoma Amritam Gamaya Asatoma Sat Gamaya Toma Soma Tuesday night, 5.55. I'm not quite as squirmy <laughs> as I was last week. Um, yeah, I feel more like steady, steady, stay steady going forward. <laughs> it's like that kind of a, oh yeah. <laughs> 
feel like I'm channeling Kai Pacha. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> it's that kind of energy today. So um, as we arrive in this space, once again, we are welcomed by the sounds of Alicia Matthewson with this beautiful chant, the Asatoma Prayer. If you are not familiar with this chant yet, if you have not heard me sing it with her over and over every week for long enough, the lyrics are, lead me from untruth into truth, lead me from darkness into light, and lead me from death to immortality. And so we open the space again and again with that foundation of truth, with the knowing that this, this journey, this everyday activities and um, pressure and stress and responsibilities and deadlines and all this human stuff, it is temporary. It is just a drop in the ocean of time, which is the infinite soul, the soul that existed from the beginning and will continue until the end. And in between, we have these little lifetimes and we drop in and, you know, do a couple things <laughs> and then go back and continue expanding at a soul level and drop back in and do some more of this human stuff. Or perhaps we decide Gaia Earth is not for me. It's just not even fun. It's way too much work. I'm going to go somewhere else and then perhaps the expansion happens in different ways. I am a huge lover of Gaia and of the physical experience and um, yeah, it's interesting. I believe what we're going to be looking at today is the, the experience of this human journey and the choice of how, how we move through that. Um, I have a sign on my computer. It says, exhale, <laughs> take a pause, <laughs> which was the theme of my, um, my guy is love, my first podcast that I shared today. So maybe we'll start there and it'll take us to where it's supposed to go. Um, a couple of years ago, we'll have a backstory because, you know, this is so soul stories. We're talking about stories. A couple of years ago, I met with this beautiful, talented, psychic healer, intuitive, amazing soul. <laughs> and her name is Anara White Bear. White Bear. I did not say that well. <laughs> Anara White Bear. And she did this reading for me. And at the time, um, she does what's called a sound healing, and so she channels all of this powerful um, activation through the throat. She sings at the beginning, and wails almost like it's a really intense sound. And then, <coughs> my throat needs to be cleared, and then she starts speaking, and she's just channeling whatever consciousness is coming through. And obviously, it's different depending on who the person is that's receiving it. So I went with my friend and we were sitting there and she started with the first sound and I started crying and I cried for an hour straight, not sobbing, but just like tears of recognition of knowing, oh, like she sees me, <laughs> she sees who I am. She sees what I came here to do. Like I don't have to hide anymore. Like she sees me. It was profound to say the least. And a lot of what she was saying, she said her whole theme was, and you already know this. <laughs> There's nothing I'm telling you that you don't already know. <laughs> I mean, I could count how many times she said that in the one hour, and it was over and over and over again. She was like, but we'll tell you in case you have forgotten. You already know this. And a lot of what she was saying was predicting, foreseeing what I would be shifting into in my work. And she talked a lot about you're going to be, um, I forget the exact words now, but you're going to be sending, rec uh, receiving messages and the ways that you share them, the ways that you bring those messages through and out into the world, it's going to be different than any way you've known it before. And what it turned out to be was me recording into my phone and then scribing the way that I described last week. And so she's saying all of this and I, I had not been doing that. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that was before I even knew I was going to write a book. Um, one day, my soul journey in the Gaia tribe, it wasn't even in my radar, in my awareness that that was coming. But she just laid out this plan. She said, in the next two years, who you are going to become, you will not even recognize. You will not know that person. And she said, you have this choice, you know, the 
the soul here in the human form. We're on a planet of free will. And so you have choice. Nobody can force you to do the things that your soul doesn't want you to do. The Zen um, tradition teaches this, right? Even if you're locked up in a cell, um, Mandela taught us this, even if you're locked in a cell, your choice of how you experience that is yours. Nobody can make you feel or do something that isn't your choice to, uh, as I say that, I can think of like a million things that people can force you to do. Your experience is always your choice the way that you feel and show up and express and navigate through all of the situations that life brings, like that's always our choice. And she was saying that to me. She's like, you can, you can show up and, and decide it's too much and not do it. And she said, it will be fine. It's your choice. You know, she just like took all the pressure off. <laughs> She's like, you do whatever you want, <laughs> except in this really amazing channeled way that she does it, which is like precise words. I mean, precise and super efficient and to the point. And you're just, well, I'll speak for myself. I'm just in there like sobbing going, uh-huh. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> and what else? It was amazing. It was amazing. And a lot of her message was be brave. Be really, really brave. Like step up, say the things that you know, may cause some ripples or um, maybe the edges of your comfort zone. You know, these are my interpretations of how she said it. But she said, there are a lot of people who are looking to you to be really, really brave. And when you are brave, when you step into this role that you came here to be in this lifetime, she said, everyone behind you has permission to step into their bigger roles. So she said, just, you know, I encourage you, like, be brave, do those things. And I have heard her words in my mind so many times, you know, when I want to like, oh, <laughs> like that vulnerability hangover I talked about last week, like where I want to just kind of pull the covers in my head and go, shit, why do I say these things? Or why do I feel the need to like poke at this um, old archaic way of thinking or, or being? Why do I feel the need to get engaged in that? I hear her saying to me, be brave. Be really brave. Um, it's like that little song, uh, the country song, right? I'm watching you. I'm watching what you're doing. I can feel the, um, the permission that I give others simply by giving myself permission to express who I am. And I'm not doing it for everyone else. I'm doing it for myself. But in that process, you know, when we shed the fear and we shed the layers of all the old ways we thought we had to be, we start unraveling and um, we discover where these brilliant beings inside, these incredible, gifted, amazing, infinite souls just tucked into <laughs> little tiny dense bodies that can only get so much done in a day, you know, and can only uh, go into battle <laughs> so many times before we're like, screw it all. <laughs> Yeah, it was an incredible reading with Anara, and um, I, have, I have blessed her over and over in my own journey. Each time I reach another threshold, I go back to that moment, and um, one of the pieces that she shared with me, which I've, I've pondered on my own a lot, you know, timing is this thing, it's this thing, <laughs> it's the it's the frustration of earth is that you have time and it, it limits us and restricts us and forces us and does things to us, right? That's our, our belief or my belief. Time does things <laughs> to us. Time is a, it's a construct and it's how we choose to experience it, how we choose to interact with it that gives us our emotional connection to time. And one of the things that Anara said to me in that session, which you know, is so powerful, and I share it here, hoping it'll resonate with you also. When, when she was talking about the role I would be playing, she said, you have, you have deliberately kept yourself small or hidden. The gifts that you have, the expression that you are able to bring through, the connection that you have to your source, and again, these are my words of how I interpreted it. She said that 
knowing of how big you are and what you came here to do, it didn't serve you to know that before this moment. So you weren't making mistakes by not knowing that's who you were earlier. She said, now, you know, this is two years ago. She said to me, now, now is the time for you to realize that. It's time for the cover to come off. It's time for you to start stepping into these beautiful things that you are bringing forward to humanity. The time was not right before. And so you couldn't see that in yourself. It wasn't being reflected to you because it wasn't the right time yet. And if those gifts that you had had come forward when you weren't ready for them, they would have been used for, I forget the words you used. They would have been used for purposes other than the highest purpose that you came to bring them for. Did I say that right? <laughs> that was a tongue twister. <laughs> and it sounds like it's about darkness. It's not that. It's when I, am, when I was ready to step into a bigger role, when I was ready to say, these are my gifts, and I know that I'm here to share them and to teach and to guide and to um, love in this way that I do, when I am ready for that, and then I can see that in myself and express that to others around me, I am in alignment with the highest vibration of what I came here to bring. Any earlier, and I could have gone down that rabbit hole, <laughs> Or I could have gone into ego and gone in this role. You know, the timing, our souls are, are so wise and so precise. And when we come here for these big roles, these really important vibrational ways of holding space, our souls aren't going to let it screw it up. <laughs> We're not going to screw it up. Like, they're just not letting us do that. <laughs> not at this time on this planet. Not with everything that is shifting in consciousness. Our souls are like, there is a specific plan with a specific timing, and you may not get it in the density of your human mind, but we've got a bigger plan than you realize. So hold tight. Hold tight. <laughs> it's coming. This thing you're wanting to do, it's going to happen. And then our work is to, is to tune into what the soul inside of us knows. Not thinks what the soul knows what we know we are here to do what we know like we have lived all these other lifetimes all these other journeys so when we get here and we land in ourselves it's like fuck yeah <laughs> this is what we're here to do and there's just no getting in our way there's no um the reflections coming towards us can't change our minds. Like this is who we are and who we're here to be and how we're going to express ourselves and watch out. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> and so in the, in the past two years, there's been this kind of, <laughs> I'm, I'm like meandering down a dirt road. Can you feel it? <laughs> there's been this like, Oh, I'll try it like this. And I'll try it over here, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of just this little, winding journey I've been on to to uncover what you know I could feel the vibration of what she shared the like the soul resonance is that the right word resonance mm. the expansiveness I could feel the expansiveness of my soul like you're not this big you're this big Right? I could feel that when she, when she showed me that, when she shared that through her words and, and all that she was channeling to me. I could feel that land inside of myself. And then it was just this consistent walk and uh, practice and tuning in every day. Like, what's today's assignment? <laughs> what's today's step of action for my grand plan? <laughs> Soul, show me something. Show me something. And some days I got nada, nothing. <laughs> and other days I got like a book and I would like write, write, write. Or, you know, it's just, um, it's the practice of doing that that allows all of the information to come from the soul out to be expressed. And so I've tried different avenues like blogs and articles and, um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I just tried a lot. <laughs> And along the way, there have been these moments where my soul has just 
uh, I, I sketch sometimes when, um, when I'm really wanting to tune in with my soul, I'll get out my big piece of uh, white paper and my colored markers and I'll make these, I'll allow these drawings to come through and then just magic unfolds. And so I have these drawings that have been guiding me at certain marks over the last couple of years where the image will come through. Uh, for example, I have one on the left of my desk there and that was just a maybe two or three months ago. It's a picture of um, this huge, um, it looks like a hill. <laughs> Again, my version. <laughs> my version of a hill. I know it's a hill. There's a big sun in the sky with lots of waves of light coming out of it. And then there's this hill and then there's a thousand, a million points of light. I literally sat with different colored markers and put all these little dots to represent individuals. And then there's the stage at the bottom and me sitting on the stage and this light that connects from source straight down to my crown. And then like songs, uh, music, um, meditation, and I called it Gaia's Love Festivals. You know, it's the space that I know I'm going to be creating at some point where lots of people come together and we create more energy, we create healing, we connect to Gaia, to the earth, and and we bring healing just by being together and chanting and talking. And it's very specific. It's it's um it's the way I bring it through. Because there are lots of festivals, there are lots of events, and there are lots of gatherings. The image that I drew is for me, it's how do I hold the space of what I see? And then I have, I mean I just have them <laughs> Yeah, my office is fun. There's like pictures all around. But each one of them has given me information and, and I can hold that awareness and it allows me to move towards whatever the next step is. But it's coming from in here. It's coming from this, this vast expansive soul bringing information down into this limited human body. The human Viv would never have thought that a festival is something I would be a part of. I don't, I don't go to music festivals. My daughter does that. I don't do that. So to be sitting on a stage for one, I'm like, what? I would not have created that from my conscious mind. It just, it just isn't, it wasn't there. My expansive soul has a plan and it brings that through. And so tuning into that, I now hold my, um, well, <laughs> I'm going in a roundabout way. Guys Love Festivals are these activations that are going to happen where consciousness comes through into large groups of people. And it's through this uh, meditative practice that I've created where we light up our bodies with crystal energy. We, we connect to the crystal at the center of the planet and then we light up. And it's a very specific practice that I've been doing for a while and it's like, it's familiar. It's known to me now. I didn't know that until I started the meditation going, source, what's next? And that came through. And then the picture came through. And then from there, this Guy is Love podcast evolved. So I've known for a while that I, I wanted to create some way of sharing short little sound bites, you know, little nuggets of inspiration because everybody's busy. <laughs> and watching me for an hour in a video is a lot. I mean, I think it's delightful, but <laughs> millions of people do not. <laughs> and so instead, it's kind of like um, Esther Hicks, you know, her recordings that people post from some of her workshops are like two or three hours. And when you think about time and you, you think about the block of two to three hours or one hour, or even a half an hour, it's like, oh, it's too much time. <laughs> but when you think about little sound bites of five to 10 minutes, you can do 20 of them, <laughs> no big deal, even though that adds up to the exact same amount of time. <laughs> in, our, in our minds, it's more logical. We're able to do that because it's just a short, <laughs> short little nugget. <laughs> uh, I think about how people talk about wasted time. You know, in their day, there's all this wasted time. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, if you could take all the 10 minutes where you're waiting for someone, the 10 minutes where you're sitting in line, the 10 minutes, and you add it up, you could watch a two to three hour session with us, with Abraham Hicks. Like, of course you could. <laughs> but we don't, we don't look at time that way usually. Anyway, so guy is love. Um, I've known I wanted to create a podcast, but I haven't, 
I just haven't been super motivated to with everything else that's going on. I'm like, yeah, it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And it's been sitting and sitting and sitting and the image that I drew um, motivated me. So I'm like, yeah, like we got to have a podcast before we can have festivals. <laughs> like that's the sequence, isn't it? Even though I don't know anything about festivals, I'm sure that's how it must work. <laughs> and so I, I started, you know, just putting more of the pieces together and, um, yesterday I sat down finally and opened up my software and put all the little parts <laughs> into place. Um, the backdrop, the backdrop of Gaia's Love, every podcast episode, I wanted it to be the ocean. Um, so I, I have that as the backdrop, this ebb and flow. So beautiful. Um, and then I, you know, had to come up with an intro and an outro and <laughs> just all this stuff. <laughs> so I worked on that. And today I combined it all. I combined it all. And um, once again, you know how I love shuffle and music always guides me. So I, I combined it. And then my, my process <laughs> for those who want to know how to start a podcast, <laughs> here's Viv's version 101. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so the process I have, <laughs> which is probably like, way more steps than it needs to be is I create a video and then I upload the video to YouTube and then I convert it in this online software that takes the video into an mp3 and then I take the mp3 and I put it on SoundCloud <laughs> and then hopefully once I get the setup SoundCloud will feed it to iTunes so there's a few steps but it's gonna be fine <laughs> it's gonna work out so I uploaded it to YouTube and um, when it was at the part to hit publish, you know, that last little like, boom, <laughs> it's going out into the world. It's an energy, it's a thing, it's gonna go out. <laughs> I had my phone and I hit shuffle on the music. I'm like, all right, <sighs> oh, like what's the vibration of this going to be? I feel like I know where it's going, but what what is this supposed to bring to the world? You know, and it's, <clears throat> <laughs> what is this supposed to bring to the world? I'm supposed to clear my throat, apparently. As I was sitting there, knowing, like, it's called Gaia's Love. Like, the whole first episode is seven or eight minutes. But it's, it's like, how much our planet loves us and how she is so here for us in every breath, every moment. And, you know, can we receive her support and send her our love? I mean, it's just... I love connecting to Gaia and, and that flows through in these episodes. So I hit publish and then I went to shuffle and I was like, <laughs> and the song that started playing was Gate Gate by Alicia Matthewson. And it's this heart chakra mantra, I believe. Um, I don't know the definitions of it exactly, but from what I understand, it's about just really allowing yourself to go all the way out to new shores, new experiences, new ways of being, letting go of the limitations and um, connecting through the heart. So it could not have been more perfect. Could not have been more perfect. <sighs> so yeah, Gaia's Love, the podcast is available and it's really good. <laughs> and I'm gonna be talking about it a lot because I love it so much. <laughs> uh, yeah as it rains outside. Actually, this is fun. It's raining outside and there's sunshine um, as I look out my window. And when I was growing up in South Africa, my mom, I don't know why, but she would always tell us, like, maybe I've shared this or maybe I haven't. Um, anytime there was sunshine and rain at the same time, she would tell all of us when we were little, she's like, a monkey's getting married in the, in the forest <laughs> or the jungle. A monkey's getting married. I never saw a monkey in my life when I was a child. <laughs> not till I moved to, uh, not till I went to a zoo. Like there were no monkeys <laughs> roaming around in South Africa, as many have asked me before. No lions, no elephants. They were all in the reserves. <laughs> they were not in my neighborhood. But every time I see rain and sunshine, I I just go back to the innocence and the magic of my mom saying that a monkey's getting married. Yeah, Gaia brings us these beautiful gifts over and over and over again. And it's really just about, are we paying attention? Are we open to receiving them? So, yes, 
Guys Love podcast, um, a way of expressing myself that Anara opened up um, the possibilities for two years ago. When, um, when I had some quiet space about a month ago, I, was it a month? No, it's been probably three months. It was before, before I started working on Guy's Love, or Guy's, Guy Grows Up as a book to upload. I was trying to decide what the name of that book would be and um, what was the intention it was going to go out into the world with. You know, there were all these things swirling, and so I took a whole morning and just sat down and meditated and journaled and wrote and uh, drew pictures again. So it's way back in April. And there was this... <laughs> So dry mouth. <laughs> Hold on, please. Um, there was uh, this moment where I just started writing, you know, how would I like to be introduced? Some people talk about obituaries. You know, what's your obituary going to be when you die? And what are the things you'll regret? And I was like, oh, <laughs> no, thank you. Like, I don't want to think about what I regret. Like, I want to think about how, how would I be introduced? What kind of... Um, greeting would I want if I had a really big stage you know if I was at this festival and all these people are wanting to do this beautiful process of clearing energy and connecting to Gaia like how would I introduce myself what would I say and as I was writing it out um, these very specific things came through you know it was a scribing it was a channeling and I wrote um, Vivian Gerard is the author of the one day series of books and I literally stopped after I wrote it. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> How cool. So, of course, my autism book has got to be called One Day, Gaia Grows Up. And then I went on to talk about the next book that was coming after that. I'm just writing in my journal, you know, just writing it all down. It's like the next one is One Day, Gaia's Gifts, and, you know, what that's going to be about. And um, then I went on to say, you know, Vivian is the host of um, – what did I say? It was the, you can join Vivian every Sunday from wherever you live in the world for um, her Gaia's Crystal Grid Meditations. And um, you can chat with her on Tuesdays on So Soul Stories. And then you can tune in for her daily Gaia's Love podcast. <laughs> and as I wrote it, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Didn't realize that. <laughs> it's it's when we get so still that when we're ready, that's not quite true. It's when we're ready for that next nugget to come through that our soul will go, sit down, <laughs> be still. <laughs> Here's the nugget. And if we aren't, is that true? If we aren't, yeah, if we're not paying attention and our soul really wants us to get that nugget, it's going to sort of force the situation. <laughs> so you're going to end up still in some way or another <laughs> so that your soul can get you the memo. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, one of the women that I watch, uh, Alba Weinman, she does these awesome hypnosis sessions, and she'll ask the, the client who's laying there, you know, when the soul is speaking, she'll say, and why did you bring this person here today? <laughs> And almost always the soul or the higher consciousness or the guides or whatever awareness is speaking through the person in hypnosis, they'll say, because we really wanted them to get the message <laughs> because we knew they would get the message here. They don't seem to be getting the message anywhere else. <laughs> you know, the soul, the soul that is here to play big and to really make an impact and um, to bring this beautiful vibration of love forward the soul is going to make sure that that work happens. And um, yes, it's our choice. You know, I can choose to hide. I can choose to be small. But I also know, like, my soul's going to make it happen at some time or another. So I might as well, might as well pay attention and get on board and, like, trust what the, what the signals are, what the little nudges are, and enjoy the ride. Choose to have the experience be this crazy, amazing <laughs> adventure, <laughs> this curiosity where I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's what we're doing? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Instead of my old way of trying to control it and make it, make it go the way I want it to go. <sighs> um, <laughs> 
Yeah, it's so good, right? Now, what's beautiful is, for me, is how the validations will show up. You know, I'll, I'll tune in to something and receive the message or um, sit myself down and, and listen to the whispers. And then almost immediately, there's some validation that comes from something I read or someone I talk to or uh, like the little nugget of sunshine and rain from the monkey's wedding right after I talk about how much I love Gaia and how, how excited I am to have this podcast. You know, there are just these, these little like winks or it's not even a wink. It's like just these little celebrations, you know, where when we're paying attention and our soul just, just taps us and says, good job. <laughs> like, good job. <laughs> you are paying attention. <laughs> you are in alignment. And can we receive when those nuggets and nudges and messages consistently show up? Can we receive that validation? One of the validations that happened for me, um, so last week was a really big week because of all the things that I was finishing up and New Moon and Gemini, which I talked about, you know, is in alignment with my chart and plays prominently in my chart. And so I had all these awesome things happening. And then I got this email um, from Mind Valley. I want to say it was yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. I shared the video in the Soul Shine Tribe. But in the in the article, Vishen uh, Lakiani is the founder of Mind Valley and just an incredible human being. And he was talking about um, even with all that he's created, how this visualization process that he's followed could use some tweaks or could improve. And so he had been talking to Michael Beckwith, this uh, speaker and the founder of Agape out in California, an author. And they were talking about the difference between visualization and visioning. And so I'm, I'm watching the video and literally the whole time I'm like, oh, that's what I do. Like, that's totally what it is. It's this, as, as Michael Beckwith says, and you should watch the video because he says it much more eloquently than I'm going to. He says, um, when, when we are tuning into the possibilities based on what we see in our reality around us, what we see the people around us creating, all we're going to be doing is copying what they've already done. So we're limited by the, the 3D reality. We're limited by what we can know is possible. We haven't tuned into what's really, really, really possible. We're just, you know, here, like looking at what we think, what we think can be created. And he, Michael Beckwith says, when you go in, when, when you look for the answers inside, then your, as he says, your soul, your higher consciousness, your higher self, God, whatever name you want to give that energy from inside is going to give you this incredible bigger plan than anything you could have created in your mind, <laughs> in your limited mind. And I'm literally watching the video. I was like, yes, <laughs> that's totally what happens. Like that's, I wouldn't have called it visioning. You know, I call it scribing or tuning in or um, meditation. But I love, I love the contrast of saying visioning versus visualization because it opens up so many more possibilities. It, it allows us to build new, you know, things that have never existed before. And how delightful is that? How, how incredible is that? He describes, um, I wish I printed it out. It says something like, the basic premise is behind every problem is going to be a solution. Behind the solution is an action, and behind all of that is a new way of living. So if we can go beyond the problem to come up with a creative, out-of-the-box, never-been-thought-of solution, that could become an entirely new way of life. Right? It's like the Internet before the Internet existed. Nobody knew they were missing anything. And then suddenly here's the internet and look, it's, it's life as we now know it. It is how we all function. There are so many examples of that. And so what if, um, I remember, I don't know, 
I don't know how old all of my viewers are, but <laughs> I remember this really awesome movie called Cocktail <laughs> with Tom Cruise. <laughs> We're going way back to the 80s here. <laughs> but there's this scene where he's out at the beach and he puts his, I believe he puts his shoe up on, his foot up on the table and he's looking at those little things at the ends of shoelaces. I don't even know what they're called, but it's like a little white piece of plastic that goes around the shoelace. And I remember him saying to his girlfriend, he's like, huh, all we need to do is come up with one idea that's as cool as this little thing that goes around a shoelace. He's like, because do you know how many millions of these little things they have sold? <laughs> right? Do you even know? <laughs> and so what are these little inventions and how do we come up with our own invention? That line has stuck with me for so long. Like, we just need to come up with one thing that is different, one thing that is new, one thing that nobody else has ever considered creating, and then bring that into the world. Express that, create that, and watch consciousness expand. You know, how, how remarkable, what an incredible way of, of being a soul in a limited human experience. If you're here to create and expand and make new, like, yes, <laughs> yes to that. <laughs> Uh, when, when the book um, Gaia grows up, when it was published, I have a few women who are helping me with it. One of them is Patty, the woman who's doing all the work of paint um, therapy with the children who have autism and the adults who have Alzheimer's. And so I sent a little message to the group, and it was a picture of um, oh, where's my book now? It's called Love You Forever. It's a little children's book, and it's. I have two copies of it. It's something I give to everyone when they're pregnant. It's just my favorite, favorite, favorite little children's story. And in the story, it's this um, mother who is watching her child grow up and how sad she is to watch the child grow up, even though she loves it and all the phases the child goes through and how she follows the child around the town when the child's grown up and has his own children. <laughs> and it's just so precious. And she sings this little song to him. Anyway, I used to sing it to my son, and now he's like, don't. <laughs> don't sing that song to me ever again. It's creepy. Because <laughs> I would tell him, like, you can move away, but I'm going to follow you. <laughs> I'm going to find you. I'm going to put a ladder just like this woman and climb up your window and come kiss you goodnight. <laughs> uh, tormenting him. <laughs> but I took a picture of uh, Love You Forever, and then Gaia grows up side by side. And I sent it to the group and I said, okay, we are going to dream really, really big with this book because 30 million copies have been sold of Love You Forever. 30 million copies over 30 years. And every one of those copies has been living and breathing in these families, impacting all of these moms, all of these children, bringing all of this love forward. It came from one book, from one father who wrote this story when he lost his own children. Like, all of that love he poured into this book and it just continues to ripple out. I said, so that's the dream that we're holding for Gaia Grows Up. It's just as powerful a story. It's just as beautiful. It taps into this infinite knowing of who we are as souls. All families can benefit from remembering that. It's, it's a beautiful love story. And so we hold that intention with this book. Instead of the... Um, limited thinking, which would say, well, we're unknown authors and we're printing through Amazon. <laughs> you know, we can come up with like all these reasons why it wouldn't work, why it wouldn't be successful. Or we can tune into the experience of it really rippling love, expanding love around the globe. It's, it's all in how we choose to experience it. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I feel like I've really gone <laughs> down a dirt road of <laughs> rambling conversations. <laughs> All right, what feels like the wrap-up is um, the choice of how we experience Gaia, Earth. You know, one, what I, how would I say this? I believe that this planet is healthy and strong and vibrant. I believe that Earth, Gaia, her energy is infinite and wise and steady. 
I believe she will continue for millions of years after all of us cease to exist. I believe that she is constantly in a state of regeneration, of new life coming through and the old that is ready to be released, just being recycled into her, her energy, her womb, her incubator. And so I, I have this steady knowing inside of myself that how, we, how I choose to experience Gaia is in gratitude, in appreciation, in the delight of how she surprises us, the connection, constantly connecting in whatever ways feel right to her trees, her flowers, her animals, her grass, her sunshine, her waters, you know, constantly just tuning into the vibration of her beauty. And so I choose to experience Gaia is this very loving, solid energy field that supports us, that we are exchanging, co-creating with. And so that is the experience I have of her. You know, I live a very lush life here in this little house at the top of the hill. It's just, it's a beautiful um, way of being with Gaia. And I've been reading... Um, you know, many articles about the planet and shifts, and I've talked about this a lot, and there's a lot going on with Hawaii with the volcanoes still, even after all this time. And I was watching a hypnosis video um, where the person was really expressing a lot of fear about Gaia, the, the damage that's been done, and the pain of the planet. And, and I believe there is a duality always. I, I believe you you can't have one without the other. You know, we can't experience love without knowing the contrasting language of fear. Like they go together. And what I, what I am certain about is that the more of us who are steady with our planet, who are tuning into the love of Gaia, the abundance of Gaia, the strength, you know, the more of us who are exchanging with her and sending her love and receiving her love, letting her fill us up, we, we shift the consciousness. It's not the right word. We shift the balance of the duality. We move from what is true that many are experiencing, the planets in crisis. There are, there are lots of things that are out of alignment, out of balance. When we're not focusing on that, when we're switching our attention to really feeling the harmony of humanity in Gaia, the, the tides will turn, the, the solutions come from that really steady, consistent way of seeing Earth. And so we will co-create a new Earth. We will co-create a new reality where the duality isn't necessary anymore. There, there's no longer a need for all of the pain and the drama and the fear and uh, the projection and the rejection and judgment. <laughs> I could go on and on, all those words. <laughs> we shift from that. We, we rebalance and we create um, yeah, I've talked about it before. We create paradise. We create a reality where we are whole and complete and Gaia is whole and complete. And the exchange of energy and love between humanity and our planet is indescribably beautiful. It comes from how we choose to experience this reality and how much of our time we're spending focusing on the fear and the negativity and the the projection and the lack, and how much we can, it's a conscious choice, how much we can switch our attention and redirect and see the sunshine and see the rain and uh, tune into the messages where Gaia says all is well. All is well. Everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. This is what Anara said to me two years ago. There's a master plan. <laughs> you may not see it yet. And I knew, I knew that truth. That's why I started crying and just, you can hear myself on the recording just <laughs> for an hour straight because my, my whole entire soul human body knew that what was coming through 
was an opening for me. It was a like a landing of all the possibilities. And then my choice is, can I, can I redirect? Can I align? Can I tune in? Can I go into myself to get the clarity and the answers and then create what she showed me was possible? And go beyond that, right? As big as I thought the plan was that Anara showed me. I mean, guys love festivals? Hell yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> 30 million copies of this book about autism that can change the face of autism, that can redirect all of that money back into more sessions where children and adults are learning how to rewire their brain with this therapy. Yes, like, yes, more of that. So, so. So sell stories. <laughs> That's what's happening over here. <laughs> I am living my reality and <laughs> loving every minute of it. <laughs> okay, there could be no better way to wrap up all of this talk about Gaia's love and Gaia grows up and big picture. There could be no better way than with Gate Gate. So Give me a second to share the screen and um, we are going to play that beautiful song also by Alicia Matthewson. <laughs>
Amazing. Amazing, amazing. As I was listening to the song, the sunshine is hitting one of the trees outside, and it must be like a fir tree, sort of off in the distance. But it literally is like little crystals, like it's just sparkling. The sun hit it at exactly the right spot where all the little beads of water just lit up. And it's like this incredible crystal tree <laughs> right outside the window. So, blessings to Gaia. This incredible, incredible planet that we are just gifted, blessed to be inhabiting. All right. So much love from my heart to yours. Mwah.